Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. I am so sorry I missed y'all yesterday. Hello. I want to say that I'm super excited to be streaming and quilting with you today, but I'm still really not feeling 100%. Hello, everybody. Come on in and join me. We're going to be quilting on this quilt for about an hour. And before we get started, I just want to say hello. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Tomorrow's Mother's Day. And um, I just want to give you a couple of dates before we get started. Uh, next week, we are not streaming live. We are leaving Monday to go to Vermont for the week. And so um, I had originally thought about streaming from there and just streaming on uh, our internet <laughs> that is kind of stable and kind of unstable, is very unpredictable, and using my uh, patchwork machine. But I really just don't like really fully rely on our internet there. So I've decided to nix that idea. We're just going to skip next week. We're going to come back on the 20th, Friday the 20th, to finish up this quilt. And on that Friday... We're going to be embellishing. We might do some beads. We might do some painting. We're going to just dress up the quilt to finish it off that Friday. And then the next week, y'all, we are starting a new series. So I don't know if you've seen this video yet. I'm going to pull up the thumbnail here on the screen. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. We're going to be starting a new series on the 27th. And uh, it's Quilt As You Go. And um, there's going to be 16 blocks, y'all. Originally, I had thought about doing two blocks a week. But then I started making the blocks to show you how I like to join them. Uh, quilt as you go style. And I really felt like doing two blocks a week would be rushing some of the blocks. So we're going to extend it out. It's going to be a longer series, y'all. We're going to do one of these blocks a week live on Fridays. Hello, everybody. I am feeling better. I am not 100%. I'm not going to lie. I don't feel wonderful, but I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. That's for sure. So Friday the 27th. Mark your calendars, y'all. Uh, if you want to see a preview of all the 16 blocks, I show it at the end of this video. And, um, yeah, and you can even get the uh, supplies that you need there's a print off in the description box of that video so if you haven't gotten that and you kind of want to follow along you might want to do that you might want to go see because at this point you have two weeks before we get started you might need all these things you might not it's just a suggested supply list okay so uh let me just show you in person because it's super cute before we move over to the sewing machine isn't this adorable? I love it. I just picked six of the of the 16 blocks and uh, did them. Y'all, uh, I really feel like saying that this is a project that uh, can be as easy and beginner friendly or as advanced and expert anywhere in that range, right? Because it's raw edge applique. And you can do parts of it by hand. You can do parts of it by machine. And these six blocks, I've done both handwork and machine work. Uh, if you are completely new and um, you've never done raw edge applique and that scares you and you don't want to sew these things down, you could cut them out using a permanent heat and bond and... Um, not stitch a thing, which would be super duper beginner friendly, right? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, uh, I certainly don't feel 100%. I'm not even going to lie, y'all. I really don't. <laughs> and I don't want to be like uh, a downer, but I really don't feel like I'm actually myself and that kind of explains why just don't really feel that great but I do feel like doing some quilting and so we're going to move over I'm going to show you um, 
how I plan on quilting the flowers. I've already started on one of them. Uh, just checking my tension. I actually did that yesterday before everything went downhill. <laughs> so I'm going to show you. I have a couple of different colors of embroidery thread here. We might use a few of these. I plan on doing a color, co a couple of color changes today. Uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to quilt my flowers and uh, how I plan on quilting the stems and the leaves. And then we're going to really focus on quilting the uh, hummingbird. So about a, about an hour, okay? Um, if the free motion quilting is kind of boring, I totally get it. You can come back towards the end and see what we've done, right? I'll take it off the machine and bring it over here so you can see it a little bit better. I will tell you, uh, I've worked in many a days in my life with headaches. <laughs> Migraines are a little bit different and those kind of knock me out. And so that was yesterday. Today is just a lingering headache. Who knows what what's causing it, I don't know. I don't think it's stress because I've had a really fun week, right? So it could be the weather, it, who knows what it is. All right, everybody, uh, right now, let's set you up. I have some black embroidery thread in the top of my machine and in the bobbin area, I have the same gray that I used the last time we were together. It's the superior threads, I think, bottom line. So it's super, super thin gray uh, thread that I have in the bobbin. I will use that for all of the different color changes in the bobbin. Okay, let's move on over to the uh, sewing machine. And I have to move my stool <laughs> because uh, if not, I'm going to crank my neck and I don't need that on top of a headache. So there we go. And uh, you'll see I've started here at this bottom purple flower, the dark purple flower. Uh, you'll see all of my background pieces have been quilted. So I did finish that up uh, last week after the live. And um, for the flowers, especially this one, uh, I'm doing little tiny loop-de-loops with black thread right around all the edges. And the black thread, I'm, I am going into the black outline a little bit uh, because you really don't see it. And so that's where we're gonna pick up. I'll show you some of that. The setup for my machine right now, uh, I have the straight stitch selected and my stitch length is a zero. Um, I don't even think I've lowered my feed dogs, okay? But uh, I do have my free motion foot on and I've lowered the tension on my top thread to um, in between a negative one and a negative two so that that bottom thread doesn't poke up to the top. All right, so that's where we're starting. And actually, I've already quilted that petal so we're just going to be starting with this one right here and I like this little loop-de-loop -loop around the edges and I know it doesn't show on the camera the way it does in person but the inside of these petals is a little bit raised up uh, away from the edges and I kind of really like that And this is kind of a, a neat little design because you don't have to worry about being so precise and perfect. Um, and it's okay to be inconsistent with it. And 
and it actually goes by pretty quickly. And uh, of course, I'm just jumping from petal to petal, so I will have to come back and cut all of these little jump stitches. And when I start, uh, I'm just taking a couple of little tiny stitches just to lock it in place, and then I uh, just continue quilting. this center of the flower it's orange and I was originally thinking of switching to an orange thread for that but so that you can see what I'm quilting on the outside really well I'm going to do it with black thread for the center of this flower. go so you can see that pretty well it's just like doing little circles and traveling all the way around the edge uh, I did forget to tell you that I've changed to a thinner embroidery needle last week I was using like a 9014 and this week or after the live I switched to a thinner one I don't know the size but it's thinner than a 9014 and uh, so now I can quilt off the edge without the needle destroying and shredding the edge of the applique fabrics. Uh, and I think that's all the black that I want to do at this time. I want to switch over and uh, show you some of the green work that I want to do. Um, you can see my stems and my, my leaves. Even some of the stems are starting to pop off because I've handled this quilt so much. But uh, let's take the black out and let's switch to a green. I know I've said this before, but when I'm over here, I can't see your comments. And so I always have to come back after the live to see all of the conversation. Let's see, I'm gonna put in a lighter green. Ordinarily, uh, I would like to put these on my thread stand, uh, but it's behind the machine and I have to stand up and reach back there. <laughs> so I'm just putting them on the little uh, thread holder that's on top of my machine. Sometimes the thread gets caught up in there. So I don't particularly like to use this thread right there, but that's what we're doing. And pardon my hands while we do a quick thread change. All right, so for a good portion of my flowers, I'm going to be doing this little loop-de-loop-de-loop-de. -loop -loop uh, I thought I would show, and I thought it might be helpful to show you how I plan on quilting these thinner stems. Because, um, you know, that part might be intimidating for a lot of people trying to stay within the edge or quilt the entire edge. And... Because this is an art quilt, I feel like we can get away with so much more. 
and I don't plan on quilting the entire edge of my stems. So let me show you what I plan on doing with that. Let's bring that bobbin thread up to the top. I think a lot of people would ask if you wash this would the edges that are not quilted down fray and my answer is yeah they would um, they would fray all right a couple of little tiny locking stitches let me put this glove back on While I'm moving the quilt around, take a look at all of the different designs that I've done in my backgrounds pieces. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I am just doing and I know the light doesn't show up until it moves away from the light. Back and forth like little zigzags all the way up. that there's a little tiny piece of a leaf here while we're right here I'm just going to jump right over to it and stitch that down and let's jump over right across that hummingbird and finish off the stem that goes towards the edge of the quilt. Because that green thread would show up if I went off the edge, uh, it would show up on that black. I'm just trying to be careful not to go into that background. For the leaves, I think just a simple outline of the leaves would be nice. I really feel like my hands are extra sh shaky today. <laughs> See, I'm going kind of really slow, right? I think a lot of people get this misconception uh, watching videos that have been sped up uh, that they have to go really fast when they're free motion quilting. And uh, most of the time, I, I actually go really slow. Let's jump over and do that little portion of the leaf. And that is my plan for the leaves and the stems. Uh, so I'm hoping that just showing you that, if you haven't quilted yours yet, I know a lot of y'all have already quilted, but just doing a simple, really loose zigzag right up the stems, that's how I plan on doing mine. 
We'll do one more down here at the bottom. And we'll do this leaf while we're right here. a really simple outline of the leaves I'm trying to block the light but it's not going to work <laughs> uh let's see let me bring this over and cut the jump stitches and y'all tell me uh which one of the other flowers that y'all want to see me quilt before we move over to the hummingbird okay i do want to cut these jump stitches because they're kind of in the middle of the hummingbird and we don't want to quilt over top of those. And the quilt draws up a little bit because of the jump stitches. So let's cut those. There she is. See how she draws up, jumping around from place to place? <laughs> Let's cut these on the back. And I'll just cut them so it lays flat and I'll cut the, make the back pretty after we're done. So, uh, Flowers. We have the light purple, we have the rose colored flower, the yellow, and the white. Pink. Debbie says the pink flower. Okay. So for the pink, I brought over a light pink and a red. The light pink will blend in and the red will show up a little bit more. Let's live on the wild side and show a thread that's going to show up a little bit more on the quilt. <laughs> so let me switch this over. Y'all get a, a good idea of uh, how we're going to quilt those stems and leaves. Threading, threading. <clears throat> All right, I'm almost done, y'all. Okay, doke. All right, we're gonna move over to the pink flower. Let's bring her over. And while I have that red in, I do want to quilt the bottom edge of the, oh, we're gonna go glitchy today, the bottom edge of the hummingbird's throat area too, while I have this thread in. So let's do that first before we move down to the, um, flower because I don't want to forget. I wanted to use two colors on this one piece of fabric, this one piece, because it's more light up towards the top and it's red towards the bottom. So I wanted to start right about there. Okay. 
You can see I'm kind of staying away from the edge a little bit. My main goal really is uh, to stitch the piece down so it's permanently on there. And then it's going to just fade off into white at the top. And while we're right here, let me get the eye of the bird as well. All right, so there's that little stitching. Let's move on down to the flower. And uh, because my hands are super duper shaky today and uh, I cannot rely on getting nice, pretty lines around the outside, we're going to just do some back and forth filling in on these petals and not really outlining them at all. So uh, I'm pretty sure you can see that. You can see the red thread that goes into the black outline. I'm going to take a black Sharpie, y'all, and touch that up. That's how I'm going to fix that. I'm just going to travel right down to this pedal.
right, because this is going by pretty quick, I'm going to finish these petals since I have this thread in the machine. I won't have to come back and do these remaining ones. So sit tight for a second, and then we're going to move on to the hummingbird. We have a couple little tiny pieces. We're just going to grab those real quick. You can see some of my little tiny pieces, I just put a line of quilting through it, right? Just enough to make it permanently there. And so there is that flower. There are, and it is so hard to capture this on film, especially when the camera is this close, all kinds of textures uh, going on in this quilt, which kind of really make it fun in person especially if you're a touchy-feely kind of person. Peg said, what keeps the stitches from coming out when jumping from place to place? Well, I'm using really tiny stitches, right? Even if I was using longer stitches, right when I first start, you'll see me take just like stitch, 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 right close together. And when I stop, I usually try to do that too. Um... What color do we want to use? The light green, I think. Um, and that's really what locks it in. Have you ever tried to pick out quilting that is really, really close together? <laughs> it's not impossible, but it's not easy either. 
uh, especially being a long armor, but not even that. I've picked out quilting that I've done on this machine and it's taken forever. So the nature, the uh, probability of the quilting just coming out on its own is very slim. <laughs> you actually have to work at it to actually unpick it anyway. So. You could, if you didn't want to just jump from one to the other, each time you move, you could pull a longer thread tail like this, right? And tie it off and bury it in your quilt if you were uneasy with jumping without tying it off. All right, I've put in some lighter green and I wanna cut this jump stitch that's going across the bird. I've put in that lighter green and we're gonna start stitching around uh, the edges of the green parts of the bird. I know, and, and I've been thinking about this for some weeks as we've been doing this project, I know that I want to come in and do some detailing work with the wings because I left that very non-detailed. I just cut out the piece I did not put in a lot of detail there. So I might stitch some of that detail in, but the next time we come back, I do want to either use beads or paints to really add some depth into these pieces, okay? Debbie said, it's the new needle, maybe a 140 SO5. Uh, I don't think so, Miss Debbie. It is the Smith's Embroidery Needle. It's a size 1175. It's the smaller uh, one that came in this pack. There's 1490 and 1175 in this pack. Mary Jo said, are you gonna put any French knots in the flower centers? I think so, Mary Jo, I think that would be gorgeous, don't you? French knots or beads or something? Trinita said, how are you doing? I'm hanging in there, Trinita. I'm not 100%, but I'm much better than yesterday. All right, so let's start at uh, the top of his head, right? See, I just grab the two little threads, the bobbin thread, the top thread, and just stitch, stitch, stitch. Four little stitches, just like that. And that's really all it takes just to knot that stitch right on up. And then we can cut it away. You could get that out, but it wouldn't be very, very easy. So there's his head. I'm going to move on over to his wing. And you notice anytime I want to move my hands, I completely stop before letting go. All 
All right, here's where we can start quilting in some of the details. I'm using a thread that kind of blends into parts of it. So this won't be the only detail I'm going to do to the wings. You can kind of see, like I want to show you one of the reasons why heat and bond light is not a permanent adhesive, why you have to stitch it down. After the weeks of handling this quilt, several of my pieces have started to lift like that, right? If that was an issue for you, you could always use a little bit of glue and just stick that back down and let it dry and then quilt over top of it. But the heat and bond light is not permanent forever. There we go. So it's, it's getting a little bit of uh, texture in his wing there. All right, let's jump over to this other wing. We're going to jump over to these feathers here. Oh, poop. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. I actually don't like using the thread cutter at this point because my thread cutter leaves quite a kind of an ugly knot on the back. So. Now this feather, I don't know if y'all remember when we did this piece, but I used some, I think that was ink tents, just to draw in the details of that feather. It's actually one piece, but we used some ink tents to, uh, to draw in some details. So we'll just use those lines as a little guide. Oh, I did 
did it again. See, I am not on my A game. <laughs> not on my A game. We're going to move right on over to these longer tail feathers. Sometimes I have a hard time imagining just freehanded what I want to do right there. So let me just show you. I have a, a friction, is that how you say it? Friction, friction fine liner. Uh, this will erase with an iron. Uh, and so if it helped give you a guide, you could always come in and draw yourself some details that will disappear later if you don't want them to show, right? Let's give ourselves a little guide to come in and do the quilting. Can you use a triple stitch? Uh, you could use any of the stitches that are in your machine to do the quilting. But yeah, it, um, Debbie made a really good point. I have the free motion foot on. You kind of really want to just stick to a straight stitch that's just going up and down. It's not moving side to side or anything else. It's just going up and down. If you want to do any of the decorative stitches in your machine, of course, you'd use a different foot, right? And you could certainly do any of the stitches in your machine with the right foot to stitch down your pieces, and that would be gorgeous. Can I use monofilament thread instead of change in colors? Absolutely, Marilyn. Yes. If you like working with it, I find it very, very fussy, and uh, it really tries my patience. And so um, the embroidery threads work a lot easier for me, but if you like working with them, absolutely. Yes. You can see that little tiny sliver of fabric that goes up. I'm just doing a straight line right up through it and coming back down. Just to get it stitched in place. See those little lines with the marker really help give me an idea of where I want to go without willy-nilly just kind of eyeballing it. And then with a quick swipe of the iron, those marks will go away. go you see that uh what else do we want to do i want to stitch down the white and then the top part of the uh chin and throat area so we'll do that together before we end for today so when we end what i'll really have left to do is to quilt down the white flower uh, the light purple flower and the yellow flower. And if we have a few minutes, since I'm putting white in the machine, maybe we'll do the white flower together. Um, I had really thought about 
doing several different colors of thread and the quilting on that bird. But there's so many embellishment options that we can do. And so I think the light green, I'm just gonna stick with the one color of the quilting thread and uh, kind of have fun with some embellishments. Sorry, I'm gonna hit the camera for a second. <laughs> There isn't really an excellent place to put that camera where it's not in the way and you can still see. So uh, what are your plans for the rest of the weekend? Our kids are actually coming over for dinner tonight um for dinner so that's nice and i'm gonna go make lemon bars for my mom after the live <clears throat> and then i'm gonna chill and take it easy <laughs> uh i've got a little bit of work to do tomorrow before we leave for vermont and um yeah, I'm just going to try to get rid of this headache. Okay, doke. We're going to do the white. And let me just show you again because you can really see it here. I'm going to bring that quilting, that quilting lines, right up into this area like that, and I don't want to forget, so the little markings will help give me a guide. And uh, there we go, we'll do that little detail. <clears throat> Pardon me. Cut these threads hanging loose there so I can let go of them. I really feel like uh, these pieces, especially the hummingbird, if you love thread painting, there is so many things you could do with this bird. Um, yeah, I really feel like the possibilities are really endless with all the different thread painting and the colors. got a little bit of texture in here I know the light is making it hard to see I do want to pick back up right where we left off with this red thread and just stitch down the top of that area Sometimes I'll do that I'll use two different colors of thread because I really felt like the red was too dark to come up here I didn't want it that visible right but the white was too light to stitch down at the bottom so two different colors of thread so let's uh, we have just a couple of minutes let's go on over jump over and uh, work on this white flower just a little bit I want to do the flowers 
uh, kind of different, each one of them a little bit different. So for this one, we're gonna do a simple outline. Even though my hands are a little bit shaky. This will make the center of these petals really kind of pop a little bit. None of it is really popping a lot because I'm using a thin uh, worm and natural batting. And so um, nothing is really popping, popping, not like trapunto popping. Do you know what I'm saying? But it, it does have different textures. That area there started a little messy. I'll have to clean that up. really just want to finish up this flower and then we're going to go back to um, the other table and just take a good look. I am super duper pleased with the performance of the bottom line in the bobbin. Uh, usually I use YLI 
or AK Trading Company threads um, to do my quilting on this machine. And uh, a lot of the times my machine does not like to quilt side to side, but using the uh, bottom line thread and the bobbin seems a lot stronger and uh, I'm not having thread break issues and uh, I can move side to side without my thread shredding. So that's nice. A couple more pieces. All right, and there's one little tiny piece of that flower that pokes through the yellow flower right there. I'm just gonna grab that since we have the thread. We're going to call that a day, y'all. Uh, so there's a couple of different ideas for quilting the flowers. The first one we started off with today was the dark purple flower at the bottom. Just doing some wiggly circles around the outline, right? And then I showed my plan for quilting the stems and the leaves. Let's switch over to this other camera. Stems and the leaves, and then uh, we quilted the hummingbird. And you could really get as elaborate with the quilting of the hummingbird, or keep it super simple like I did, right? Just stitching around the outline of it all. And even with that, I have a ton of jump stitches to cut and get rid of. But let me just see if I can get rid of those right there so you can see that hummingbird really well so i really feel like uh it's got some good texture to it i like the light green thread that i used because in the light it short it sort it sort of shines <laughs> um but there's still a lot of possibilities for maybe some painting details or maybe even some beading so at this point, uh, the center of the white flower still needs to be quilted. The whole yellow flower, I still have to quilt some of these stems and leaves down. And then this purple flower down here at the bottom. But we quilted this flower together, and I kind of really like that. It feels cool. I like the texture of that. Um, so yeah, it's coming right along. I'd say maybe another hour if I really took my time, but we actually got a lot done in this hour. I mean, a whole flower, some stems, another flower, and the bird. So, um, and I feel like I kind of really took my time too. So I think you could get a lot done in an hour. Hello, everybody. Oh, Mary Jo said, just to let you know, I think it was a waste to use the wool batting on top of the warm and natural because I wanted it to do, because I wanted to do so much detail stitching. It just pushed it all down and flattened it out. Wow. I would have thought that that extra layer of batting and, and being wool batting, that it would have given you the dimension. That's interesting to know. 
I used super, super thin, <laughs> super thin, warm and natural cotton batting. So uh, my puffy parts are not extremely puffy, but what does make a difference is that uh, around my puffy parts, I really quilted the heck out of the background so that if you run your finger across it, you can feel raised parts. But I wouldn't say that any of it is really puffy like it would be with like a trapunto look, you know what I'm saying? I would have thought that the extra layer of batting would have done that for you. Ah, you're welcome, Linda. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rich and Tammy. Rich said, uh, it's very relaxing to watch someone else sew or quilt. I think it might be the humming of the machine. It could be. <laughs> it could be. Tammy, you're going to get your mom's machine fixed. That's awesome. Do you have a video on Trapunto? I know I did a video on Trapunto, and I'm not sure... If it's here, I think it's here on YouTube, but it might also be part of my Patreon. I forget now. There's so many videos. There's a lot of them. I forget. What I would do is uh, on YouTube, type in Lisa Capen Trapunto and see if it pops up. I think I did a video on it, but I couldn't be for sure. Before I close out for today, let me just show y'all what I got in the mail yesterday. Um, and I didn't even see it until later on because I wasn't feeling good, but I was kind of excited to get it. I ordered uh, the Kona Cotton Solids. Um, this has 85 charms in it. Look at all those. They're sort of like natural colors too. 85 pieces. I'm going to be using this charm pack. Uh, to do the quilt along that we're starting on the 27th. These will be my background pieces. So like this one, I did all tea stained muslin for backgrounds, which is super cute. <laughs> and once I did it, I was like, oh, I think I want to do that again. But I had already ordered this. But I think this will be super cute too. And I think I'll fall in love with it. Different colored background squares. Right, so that came yesterday. That was actually a good deal. Yes, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Vicki thinks it was on Patreon. It might have been. It might have been. It might have been. I think there was a mug rug that we did, though, wasn't it? I don't know. I have to go back and look. Anyway, y'all, I am certainly not the only person. There's tons and tons of videos here on YouTube by other, like even more experienced, way more experienced with Chirpronto than I am. So um, I always suggest that you check out videos from other content creators uh, because... Um, there's some awesome videos about it out there. For sure. For sure. So uh, if you came in uh, after we got started, I just want to remind you that um, next week, next Friday, we're going to be in Vermont. So no live. I was going to stream live from Vermont, but the internet is just so unreliable that we're just going to say no. And we're going to come back on the 20th to finish up the hummingbird. That'll be the last video for the hummingbird uh, as we do some painting and embellishing on this quilt. And then we're calling it finished. I think I could spread this. I think there's a million things we could do with this quilt still. But we're going to embellish it in one more video and call it done. And hang it up and let that, uh, and let that be. And then the 27th, we're starting this this is only six of the blocks there's 16 all together if you want to check out what all the 16 blocks are uh, you can see my drawings at the end of this video right there 
You can go to the end if you haven't seen it yet. There's all kinds of stuff. That's why I called it all the things. There's um, some primitive looking blocks. There's a thimble, not a thimble, a pin cushion, a spool of thread, a teacup, really cute stuff. And uh, it's free patterns, y'all. So, but here's the thing. I do plan on making mug rugs patterns from, if not all of them, a good majority of the designs. So <laughs> stay tuned for that information. I hope you have a, an awesome week next week. I will miss you. Uh, but I do look forward to coming back on the 20th to finish up this hummingbird. Again, I'm sorry I missed you yesterday. I love you so much, and uh, yeah, have a fantastic week, everybody, okay? Fantastic week. I'll see y'all soon. Bye, everybody.